Hey guys, this is Rena Wells and welcome back to another video in my new series and I'm going to just tell you a little bit about me first. Um, I'm highly intuitive, I have all of the abilities, empathic, all of that, like everything. And um, this new series is going to be about working with your sensitivity in a very dense world, mental disorders, addictions, things that keep you blocked, and what's happening in the energies around us. So I do talk a lot about darker forces, and I do talk about light force energy. I talk about all energy, and so I'm just putting that out as a warning, because if you do have issues with the mysticism of spirituality and energy work, then this may be triggering for you. So I just wanted to put that out there. This video is going to be about the highly sensitive. It's going to be about how darker forces hijack our psyche and our energy bodies, our etheric shield. And I'm going to just channel whatever spirit brings through. And so we're going to get started, so make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any more videos, and also make sure that you comment because I really want to hear how these new videos that I'm putting out, I know a lot of my subscribers, I know you're, you love the tarot readings, um, but the back and forth of my channel and the tarot readings, even though I love tarot, don't get me wrong, I love tarot, it a point in my journey that it became very draining and which is why I don't offer any more readings but I do offer coaching sessions I do offer a monthly membership where I channel workshops for now I believe the membership will get much more intense as we progress with the new energies that spirit has aligned me for a lot of my teachings do include plant medicine and psychedelics and working with ayahuasca especially with ayahuasca and yeah, we're going to just get started. So Spirit is bringing through a story. So we're going to talk about story. A lot of the teachings that are going to be coming in, Spirit wants you to recognize that these teachings are not new. And teachings in the earth plane are not new. Spirit says that it takes a mass consciousness in order to groove in a new energy grid system. And this is why the age of Aquarius that's coming forward. The tipping point of the mass consciousness that's happening right now has all been predetermined by every single person on this planet at this time. <laughs> it's fair to say there is only just one consciousness on the planet, and that's all of us. There's just one consciousness on the planet. When, and when we came here, we all decided that there was going to be a tipping point for us to groove in a brand new way of living, a brand new grid system. And so nothing that's ever taught in the earth plane, including things that I bring through, are not new teachings. Anything that anybody does is not new because it takes a great amount of power as a mass consciousness tips in to a new reality in order to create a new grid system. So Spirit is bringing through, you know, the work of Jesus, the work of Moses, the work of Buddha, those things, Allah, uh, whatever our religions and our spirituality thus far have brought together, Spirit is bringing through that those teachings created such a mass consciousness shift that it created a new grid line, a new way of finding God, finding source energy. Now Spirit is also wanting me to bring through that there's many different aspects of God. Some of us still have a understanding of like Great Spirit, that it's a one consciousness and Spirit says yes, in the whole duality of everything there is a one consciousness. But Spirit says in order to birth life and create our force energy to come into life, we need a feminine energy and we need a masculine energy and so the earth was created to be the womb of the mother 
the deity of our true mother of the goddess energy and the father energy is the creator force energy that created the mountains that created the trees that created uh, the heartbeat inside of your heart that pumps the life force it keeps everything in a moving momentum is what masculine energy does it moves it's action oriented and so when we fell in consciousness when all of us came here spirit is saying we all came here not only to forge a new way line into the grid into the mother as a mass consciousness as we awaken but we are also activating all the ancient grid lines as we move forward and taking those teachings to ascend and as we fall we cannot fall sorry spirit is saying we cannot rise until we fall and so there's a two-directional pattern that's happening here as above so below yes we all came from high divinity of light and fell into this consciousness but spirit is saying when a baby is first born and first comes out we think that is the full divinity of God and spirit is saying it's actually just a small divinity of God when you feel the energy of the birth of a new baby because there had to be a fall in consciousness for us to be able to receive that divinity spirit says there is an upward motion of surrendering and so we cannot as empath psychics intuitives this is why we continuously heal our traumas and things that are blocking our energy system that we are unable to receive the amount of that divinity based on how much we're able to surrender to God and so our channel and the clarity of our channel is only determined by how much we've actually surrendered to spirit now this is a tricky one for a lot of you light workers out there because I know that there are a lot of very gifted people in energy that are out there very gifted unfortunately my gift has been able to see true alignment of divinity because there is only one truth of alignment of divinity and that's to move into a state of pure unconditional love and purity and purity and innocence is something that a lot of us have lost now I'm here working with highly sensitive people who have had massive amounts of trauma in their life. And the reason for that is when you are highly traumatized as a young child in your life, you are dissociated from your body in that trauma and you split from the 3D world and move into the ethers. And Spirit is saying, the father energy says I protect my creation and so when I see a child you know they're saying Jesus loved little children right when I see a child that has been traumatized I've already saved you and so this is a message for you out there whoever's listening to this that spirit has already saved you I've taken your light when you split from your body in a dissociative abusive pa uh, uh, situation Thank you in an abusive situation I have taken a piece of that your light your the light that I gave you and I've held it dear to my heart spirit says when you are ready to receive that is when you have cleared the darkness from your vessel so as you surrender that purity that divinity is given back to you it's never lost it's never lost but we cannot receive that basically from the time that you were born that piece of divinity the purity of that we think we've lost it but we haven't spirit has been holding on to that and that is the innocence and the purity that returns to you and because you are working on keeping your vibration so pure spirit is saying that doing that kind of work to regain your innocence to regain your natural state of consciousness before the trauma before you even incarnated here is when you will be given that higher perspective now this is beyond akashic records this is beyond all of that new agey stuff this is 
uh, vision of like an eagle. It is the vision of creator force energy. It is the vision that you will see every single path, every single religion, every single teaching, everything that's on the earth plane, and you will see why it's there, the direction of it, how it's moving, and <laughs> how it aligns to this one pillar of light, which is div divine truth of knowing the father energy. Now to know father energy, you must know the mother first, which is where we're living. And this is why a lot of us now are getting reconnected to the earth. You cannot know the father fully until you know the mother. And I say this with the utmost of love, Spirit is also saying that the reason why people are attracted to my work is because those need to feel the medicine of the mother on a cellular basis. And I work with those who are the new leaders of this new world that are coming. It's a new consciousness that we're building for the age of Aquarius. And if you are one of those leaders, you know that because you're listening to this and you know that there's a lot of things out there in the world that no longer resonate with you and you're ready for the next step. You're ready to move into your full truest self because you're on the brink of massively healing everything in your life. Also, I'm being shown is that you will gain that high perspective as well and you will realize that you need to change on a cellular level level the DNA aspect and I know lots of intuitive people are saying oh I don't need to drink ayahuasca I don't need to do plant medicine I already get all of that and I'm gonna say that that's a lot of hogwash honestly because we are still in a human form and it takes a long time. I don't know about you, but it, I mean, if you look at evolution, that's taken a long time for us to change our DNA. And if you look at the path of psychedelics, there is a, a Terrence McKenna talks about this. And so I'm, I'm not going to quote it exact because I'm, I wasn't sure if I was even going to talk about this. It's just whatever's coming. That there was a point in the human evolution process that our ancestors were t eating a lot of psychedelics mushrooms and other things and whatnot iboga and there's a, a lot of awakening and mass our cranial brains expanded to a certain point um that we had a huge leap in evolution and so i'm gonna be honest i do not work with people who do not or have not healed on a cellular level. And the reason for that is because your DNA has a direct effect on your aura, your etheric shield, because it's directly connected to your ancestry line. And so we're going to get more into that. So let's get into how darker forces are able to come into your energy field through your aura, your etheric shield that we are all naturally born with. And how does that activate the trauma in our DNA? And this is why working with the darkness is very important. There's a lot of misconceptions in the New Age community about shadow work. Shadow work goes a lot deeper than just the negative feelings or the resistant feelings that you're going through. Everybody on this planet, through their DNA and their lineage, has been siphoned or some of your light has been given away to darker forces. There is a base low vibration of fear now that runs our world. Now, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, Spirit is bringing up that in order to know the light you must know the dark and i know that's a concept in new age circles but spirit is bringing me back to my own lineage which is indo-caribbean obea which is the balance of uh energies it is something of my ancestry line because we have been grounded in south america for i would say an average of about 300 years my ancestry line has been there before that is india and 
in spirituality, we tend to forget <laughs> that we're in the, these human bodies. And I know there's DNA activation codes and things like that. But to really know your DNA, the first level is to know your culture, where your family comes from, the darkness that's happened in your lineage, you know, that has to deal with how colonialism has come about, and even before colonialism, the lineage and what's happened in your family. Because these traumas and these patterns are activated in the human lineage, and that gets passed down to your children. And we can see this with all types of animals. We wonder, how do animals learn on their own? You know, turtles, for instance, how are they able to know that once they hatch and they walk down that beach and they get back to the ocean, how do they know? It's all cellular memory. And if you want the scientific stuff, go Google that, that scientists and medical doctors are just discovering that there is cell memory things that are being found in stem cell research. If you look at those things, now this is all about the energy of life force energy, that template. If you haven't looked at the first video of this series that I've put out, take a look at that because it talks about the template, the matrix, the energy highways of life force that everyone is connected to. Now, let's talk about the DNA and what's happening in our current environment in regards to spirituality and how that's relating to DNA. And then I'm going to talk about more of what teachings I've been brought here to reactivate in our grid line. Again, they're not new teachings. It's just a different perspective to express it so you guys can absorb it in a certain way. So let's look at what's happening in our new age community. And again, this is not to put down anybody's teachings or anything else. This is about evolution. We needed everything that's been manifested in our world. Everything that you are attracted to in this world, it's not good or bad. It's simply what you need at that time. We're gonna go back to the analogy of the bottom of the ocean. To the deep crevices in the ocean where creator force, the sun, is unable to shine. And we have finally hit a place in human evolution where in the past we have hit in this bottom plateau where we are unable to see creator force light, where there is so much unconsciousness and war and hatred and, and all of those things on the planet. We have hit that platform again. But the difference, and this is why you're listening to this, because you are a definite leader of this new earth. And I know you've been struggling because there's nothing else out there that's helping you with this dense darkness, right? And the reason for that is because we have not crossed the threshold as a mass consciousness yet. To end the sinister system, the control, the matrix whatever has been running our system right now this is why you know earth has released covid why people are waking up at rapid amounts of uh, in time right now uh, mass amounts of people are waking up because of covid and that's because we know as a collective we haven't been able to break our sinister ways and the ego and this darkness down in what we have created in a system and have been able to bridge and bring harmony to the planet. That's why it's so important. That's why you're going through such a difficult time. I know if you're listening to this, you're going through a very difficult time. And the reason for that is there are a lot of intuitive healers and very psychic people that are running around at the bottom of the ocean, grasping little pieces of light. Oh, there's a piece of light, there's a piece of light, and then it's gone and you're stuck again. And it has a lot to do with healing your ancestry line, the DNA that you were born into, that you chose to come into in this life. Now, the darkness in our DNA is very important because those codes were activated eons ago. And so as you came through your mother's womb, it's not just the trauma of this lifetime. It is 
multiple lifetimes of when those dark codes were activated. And as a highly sensitive person that you are, it's going to be very difficult with whatever you're doing out there right now, uh, meditation, uh, DNA activations, all of that. You're only going to get a little piece of light because, again, we're at the bottom of the ocean and only God's light can reach so far down. This is also another thing I want to bring forward of in regards to the twin flame journey. Twin flames are here because of when the, their dynamic energy of when they come into sacred union are able to hold a, a very bright pillar of light that can reach the bottom of the ocean but that's going to be in another video so make sure you subscribe to hear more teachings and more activations that are going to be coming through in these videos and so what's happening is your lineage your dna the dark codes have been activated and so you're not just healing this current life of trauma you're healing multiple lifetimes and your lineage now, I'm not saying that this is going to be a layered effect, and this is why I work with plant medicine. The reconnection to the earth is needed because we need a 3D platform. So, if you can visualize the sun shining down as creator force into the ocean, and that light and those beams of light hit the ocean that's scattered, right? And the 3D plane is the surface of the water if you can visualize that. And those beams of light go all the way down to, to the ocean until it hits the bottom where there is no light. We've already established that. Now, in order to pull in high creator force energy, the bright light to bring that balance to that depth of that darkness, to transmute that, is going to take light to shine just as bright at the 3D level, at the surface level of the water, right? It's almost like bringing that sun down from the space and bringing it onto the 3D level. Now, of course we can't do that, but you have the capability to do that because you're listening to this. I know you're a new leader of the, of the new earth that's coming and I know that you're being prepped and I know that you have that amount of light to hold so if that light is able to sit at a 3D grounded place, it will get to the bottom of the ocean. Okay, so how do we do that? I know that sounds, oh, okay, so how do we do that? I'm going to talk about right now how the darkness affects your etheric shield and your aura. And then we'll talk about the light codes. So you coming into this body and your lineage and your DNA, no matter how many DNA activations you do, remember you're pulling in from a higher source, bringing it into the 3D. It can't fully get down to the bottom, right? Of, of that ocean, right? Because you're pulling it up from a higher source. You have to become it in the 3D. And how do you become it in the 3D? Is to go in to your trauma into the darkness. Now, that's not just necessarily going into the feelings and trying to figure out the feelings. That is a very uh, slow way of progress, right? It's almost like you have this wall in front of you and you have this little uh, chisel, kind of like in the movie Shawshank Redemption, and you're chiseling away at this wall. You know, that is the work that people are doing right now. It, it, it's very difficult and if you're a highly intuitive soul uh which i know you are if you're listening to this then you're probably driving yourself crazy so i'm going to talk about what's happening in regards to the dark codes that are happening right now and this is going to be difficult for some of you to hear because Again, I'm going to ask you to put your judgments aside. But if you're highly intuitive, empathic, and psychic, and, and you're a new leader of this new earth, and you know, and you know this because you've been called, and you're understanding that there is something for you in moving into this new way of living and out of the system, 
then it is to make alliance with all energies. It is to make an alliance with the darkness. You see, we have this misconception that these demons, this darkness, are trying to hurt us. And yes, it's painful. Yes, the dark does activate our deepest fears. But we have a judgment on that. And if you've been on this journey for a little bit, which, you know, I know a lot of you have been. When you look back at things of darkness, they have been your greatest teachers. And I'm bringing up Wayne Dyer has said this, you know, that his father was his greatest teacher. And I, I my, my abuse and all the things that I've gone through, I would choose it again. Because we have all fallen in consciousness, they have been my greatest teachers. I would not know the purity of my soul and my powers and my abilities if I did not face and make contracts with darker things. And I have seen the dark since I was a little child. You know, I've seen demons my whole life. But we are so afraid of the dark. We are so afraid. We are so afraid of it in our psyche, so much so, that when you are so afraid of the dark, of facing these dark entities, it's more of an avoidance, right? What do you do to your energy body on the inside of you? Resistance will persist. And the more that you resist, and I know a lot of you have seen these dark things and you feel like you're getting attacked, you are getting attacked for a reason is because you're not facing them head on. You're not speaking to them to find out within yourself your own power. Because anything that is complete darkness that is coming to you, no matter how sinister Right? I'm even talking about the demons if you've been abused. You know, I have I've had incest abuse in my life and I would see my abusers demons and they would come and they would taunt me. You know, I have cleared homes in the past and that was another part of my work that I used to do. Very poltergeist activity, things like that. Very dark things. But when you stand strong in your power, those dark things show you how powerful you really are. Because if you're dealing with something that is super dense, you need the complete opposite to balance out that energy. The problem with our spiritual community is no one's really doing this work at all, is this dense level. Now, I'm gonna give you some some pointers in, in how to do this in a safe way, right? Don't jump into working with dark energy if you really don't have any idea of what you're doing, okay? Hit me up, send me an email, reach out to me, okay? You have to be in a very strong mindset when you're ready to do this work, that you know your light to a certain extent. There are people that do lose that battle, okay? They don't really lose the battle, but there are people that um, have sided with the dark as well that I have seen um, that gain power through the darkness and make contracts that way. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about making contracts. I'm not talking about becoming best friends and saying, hey, like I'll work with you. I'm not saying about that. I'm, I'm talking about using the darkness to show you how powerful you really are, okay? Now, how that affects your psyche and how they siphon you is through your lineage, right? Your DNA codes. You will have the same patterns as your mother, your sisters, your brothers, your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents. They may manifest in a different way and you may have some disagreement about that and saying, well, no, you know, my mom beat the shit out of me or my mom beat the crap out of me. I never did that. I don't have that in me. But you need to go deeper into that darkness. Where underneath that expression of abusing a child, where did that come from? Because people are not made that way. Okay, yes, there are uh, 
energies that come in that never fully stand in the light, but they choose that for a reason. And you may say, well, my mom was like that, or my, my abuser was like that. Fine. However it is, we need to still go deeper underneath that and look at what they're trying to teach you. And the first thing that we can take from darkness is, well, first they're showing me how I don't want to be, because most definitely I do not want to be beaten up people. I don't want to be an abuser. That's the first thing, right? The darkness is showing you what you don't want to be like. So how do you want to be like? Okay. It's bringing up your own fears that you may want to run and avoid but these dark things are asking you to dig even deeper to find your light. It's asking you to go to places inside of yourself that you never thought that you that you could or that you would want to. But spirit is asking you to be very courageous because that light is in in that darkness. Your medicine is within you. Your light is within you. And this is why we're talking about knowing how to get that light, how to find it in that darkness so that you can cultivate a brighter light on the 3D plane. So you can shine that down to the depths of the ocean. All right. Three is also claiming your divinity and your power and facing the darkness and speaking to them in a very powerful way that they are to be submissive to you and to acknowledge the power of the darkness. That's another thing. We don't like to acknowledge the power of the darkness, but yet it runs rampant and it has a certain power over our world. We see it on a consistent basis, but we still want to deny that it actually has a power. The darkness does have a power and so does the light, but the light and the dark can coexist. That's another misconception in our new age community. We think that the darkness is immediately transmuted. The, the darkness does not immediately transmute. They work side by side together, the dark and light. There is a fine line between the dark and the light. Okay. Just like in your brain, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere, the brain lobes do not touch. There is a gap. There is a space. And it's the same thing with the yin and yang energy. The dark and the light do not fully merge. There is a space in that line of truce, of peace, of understanding. And it is up to you as a highly sensitive soul to find that gap, right? It's the same thing between your masculine and your feminine energies. You have a left brain, you have a right brain. Our physical world shows us everything that we need to know, energetically and physically and your brain lobes do not touch. Instead, the darkness and the light, right? The right side is masculine, the left side is the is the feminine. Okay? The sorry, the left hemisphere of your brain is actually masculine, sorry. <laughs> that controls the right side of your body, which is masculine, and the right side of the brain of the lobe controls the left side of the body, which is the feminine. Sorry. So the right side of the brain is the feminine and the left side of the brain is the masculine. And the right side of the brain is all your creative feminine energy, but it's also feminines are able to work and go into really dark places emotionally. Masculine energy is very bright, you know, greater force energy, but it needs the template of the darkness in order to be seen. Okay. It's the canvas paper, right? To, so that the artwork can be seen. And finding that fine line between the two lobes, right? Walking the space between the two brains and exchanging the energy is where you want to be between light and dark and in your spiritual practice. That you are standing in between your own yin and yang energies within yourself. In your own pain and your darkness, you have all of your abuse. You have everything else that's affecting you. And then you have your divinity. And it is to be in that space between the two. To maintain those creator forces energy that are on the planet. And those energies are on the planet. They're completely imbalanced right now. 
But what's happening with the darker forces, okay, and how it's manipulating your aura and your energy field is through the mind patterns and through the trauma of your DNA, of your family lineage. And so, again, the first thing is to look, again, at your lineage of where you repeat the same patterns. It may not be in the exact same manifestation. Again, however your lineage, your parents, your grandparents have expressed it is going to be different in the way that you express it. We cannot look at the surface level of the darkness. It goes much deeper than that, right? We have to look at the intention of the energy of the power. What was the power struggle in that darkness that it was trying to accomplish what was the end result of what that darkness was trying to accomplish i'll give you an example when i freak out on my kids for an example okay they didn't do their torch they didn't do whatever no one's hearing me what you know i i get angry yeah you didn't load the dishwasher i get angry that's the surface level stuff i'm expressing it i run a rampage i blow my head off whatever it is right but what is underlying that there is a pattern in my family where women overgive, overgive, and end up doing everything for everyone else, which is a control factor because, you know, they're just not going to do it anyways. And what happens? I fall into that pattern and I end up doing it anyways. And then I feel like crap because I'm not honoring my power, right? So the first step is to get underneath the way that it's expressed and then to figure out the same vibrational pattern of the darkness. And this is where you can feel the energies out in your body and feel where is the pattern that I'm doing that matches my mother. And in that pattern with my mother or my father or whoever else I'm dealing with, where is it in them that that vibration feels the same for me, that I'm repeating something? Where does it feel the same for them? And where did that feel the same for them with their parents? Okay, and you will see a consistent vibration of darkness that has run through your family. The underlying energy that's running through your family. Remember, we have to move beyond the expression. It doesn't matter if you were raped, abused, beaten, uh, poverty, whatever. That was just the way it was expressed. Okay, the vibration of the feeling of the darkness is what's feeding the subconscious patterns and that is how the darkness is taking over your psyche because humans are so much about looking at the details of all of it we have to look at the vibrational feeling and matching vibrations in our energy body to come to a conclusion within ourselves of what vibrations we're housing because that's what manifests and that's how the darker entities are able to come in now darker entities you have made contracts not just for this lifetime but based on your lineage your family has made contracts with these darker entities over hundreds of years ago thousands of years ago even and so we're pulling and evolving and doing all of this as a collective do you see it's not just individual work anymore the new earth is going to be about community and that starts with healing the family and your lineage, right? And it's now you doing this collectively for your entire lineage. And it's not that much work because you're not going to have to go through individually. What did your parents go through? What did your grandparents go through? What did, you know, so on and so on. It's learning about the vibration and finding that same energy, dark vibration, that is underlying your family. You may want to write about that and it may take some discovery. Again, if you want to learn more, you can definitely send me an email. If you want to work with me deeper on this, we definitely can. Or you can join my membership. There's a lot of different workshops in there about clearing karma and, and, and detaching from the matrix. A lot of ancestral stuff that I work on. And so those light codes cannot fully come into an activated state until this type of work is done. And now I'm going to say like when you're working with these contracts with these darker entities that have happened from eons ago, right? Remember it's not an individual thing. It is a collective thing with your family lineage. Everyone that's in your lineage has these same vibrations, have these same contracts, 
right? What happens with your etheric shield and how teachings come to you, right? Because everything is law of attraction. And so you will get teachers, you will get things that are mimicked in light because the darkness knows that it has a contract with you because it wants to be seen and it wants to show you your power. That's all the darkness is there. Okay. You know, I have woken up in the middle of the night and had a demon standing there and it's like, like, like to the point now, cause I've been seeing them since I was a kid. I'm like, yeah, okay. What do you want? I'm not afraid of you. The darkness will feed on the emotion of fear, control, power, right? Because yes, they are siphoning your light. However, they're siphoning your light so that you feel like crap so that you can reclaim it and take that back spirit your creator you know the universe wants you to be powerful beings and have you ever heard that saying that it is not the dark that we fear it is how powerful we actually are and it's true it really is we have so much power but we cannot know that power until we have a complete contrast to that to scare us into owning it honestly sometimes we have to be so scared of our divinity that we sit in the darkness so much that we have to become so fed up with the darkness to be like okay i'm claiming my light right and so however you're attracted to different teachers different teachings out there different meditations whatever it is just know that it is the darkness that is guiding you to find your light. Now, if you have found me, you're ready for some really deep healing, right? You're ready to really come into the light. You're done with the back and forth. You're done with the, you know, not being able to keep a, a strong balance between dark and light. And this is why I run ceremonies and, and um, I'm best with the plant medicine. I'm great at coaching, but again, this is a cellular activation that needs to happen. And this is where the nurturing of the mother of mother earth comes through the plant medicine, comes into your cells and actually changes your DNA. So that's actually on a physical, visceral, tangible, something that you can physically experience. It's very different than bringing in activation codes or meditations. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's only a certain point that you're going to hit on a cellular level, right? Because remember, you are bringing in the sun's energy down multiple layers down to the bottom of the ocean where you're not, it's going to be dispersed by the time it gets to you, right? Because I'm talking to the people. I'm talking to the highly intuitive ones that are that have hit the bottom of the ocean. Okay? That you are in a dark place. You're just hanging on. And you know you're powerful. You're powerful, powerful. But you're stuck. Because nothing is helping you anymore. Right? That's because you're ready to transition. So, if you've reached this point now. And you're ready to really work with your darker entities. I'm going to give you a list now in how they, how they siphon you, right? They siphon you through excitement, lust, physical stimulus. Okay. God's love has nothing to do with physical stimulus. God's love starts with peace, right? So as you're working with these darker entities, here are the, here are the triggers. I, would, I don't want to say triggers. It's fair to saying use points. These are the points, right? That are going to tip you off that you're dealing with something dark. Okay. You're dealing with something dark. If you get super excited about something, <laughs> and I know that sounds crazy, right? But you get really excited about something. Okay. You're like, yeah, this feels amazing. I went on this retreat and then, and then, and I met these people and yeah, my calling it's coming in and this is so, Oh, it's so high vibe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All this like high vibe stuff. It's so high vibe. It's so high vibe. It's so good. It feels so amazing. No, 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 no. 
That is a mask that the darkness wears. Be aware of it. Because God's love is powerful. It is not a physical stimulus. It is the most divine, peaceful, beautiful love you will ever feel. It's not exciting. It doesn't have a tangible feeling of excitement. Okay? If you feel lust, you're getting all those nice sexual urges, you're meeting somebody, ooh, is this my person? It's not going to be lustful. It's not going to be a sexual attraction if it's from God. God does not work that way. God brings you what brings, that gives you the feeling of home and peace and a solid solidification within you that there is no doubt. You know, when spirit brings you a partner that is of karmic or something to learn, the darkness masks as something divine. It will be exciting, lustful. It'll feel real sexual, feel real good. You'll bond in that way, but it will be a trauma bond. Okay. Three, you won't be a hundred percent sure. You'll feel pretty sure about the situation, but you'll have a little bit of wavering. Even if the wavering is like 1% and you're 99.9% and you're like 0.1% unsure, it won't be from spirit. Again, these aren't ways to avoid the darkness. This is to recognize, okay, this is coming into my life. Obviously, I think I'm getting pulled into it. Let's observe it. Let's go into it. It's happening in my life for a reason. These tips are not to help you to avoid darkness. I'm trying to help you to go into it, but to also recognize what you're getting into, right? So that you know that the lessons are going to come up, that you are going to break something by facing that dark stuff so that you can shine really, really bright. The fourth is a lack mentality. Okay, if there is anything that comes to you that just feels that it's possessive or it's attached or you're overgiving in the situation, it's not reciprocal, there is a form of resistance there, then it is a darker energy. Okay, now this is how the dark comes in and will play in, right, when you're going into these things. It will play on your psyche because it will reactivate your control tactics and how you operate in these types of scenarios. And these patterns need to come up so that you can heal them. Okay. That's how the darkness comes into control your psyche through those four tips that I just gave you and how it masks so that you can feel something that you're accustomed to that that's been your navigation system this whole time because remember you're transitioning out of the way that you've navigated inside of your world and your inner world right but you're at a point now that you know that it's not working anymore especially if you're listening to this and I know I keep saying that but because I have to reiterate that you are listening to this for a reason because you are noticing these patterns okay what's on the other side What's on the other side is that spirit will always be a peaceful home feeling of unconditional love for you. Now, we may not know unconditional love, so I'm going to take out unconditional love, but it's going to be peace and home. And the way that you get that vibrational match in your life is by cultivating that within yourself, the peace and the love. So if there's still darker things coming, spirit is like forge ahead and look at it and Find the peace in those dark things. Bring everything back to a core vibration within yourself of peace. If anything that you can activate the light codes in your DNA because you know what peace feels like. Peace and bliss and calm. And I know for trauma survivors, sometimes that's a little bit difficult, but you have had a glimpse of it because Spirit is saying in all of your darkness, when you did feel peace, you hung on to it, right? Because if you're a trauma survivor, you know, if you felt a little bit of type of divinity or peace or love, that unconditional love, you know, it's there. You hang on to that. If you have to attach to anything, it is to attach to peace and love. Now, when I say hanging on to the peace and love, that's not hanging on to something you've experienced outside of yourself. 
that doesn't mean that you hang on to your child and cling to your child because they bring you that peace and love. No, this is a peace and love that you have felt deep within yourself. This is the peace and love that you find through prayer, meditation, when you are alone with yourself and the way that you communicate with spirit. That peace and love is within you. It is not to attach that to somebody or something outside of yourself. It is to hold that peace and love within you. Hang on to that. And within yourself, when you're cultivating that pure vibration, you know that if something from outside of yourself does not match that inner peace that you are holding in your pure vibration and what you've been working on and holding that within yourself, then you will know that it is not from a higher source. Doesn't mean that you need to disengage with that energy that's coming towards you, but you will have an awareness of how you are to respond to that energy. Hang on to that. And from that point, let that be your rock. Let that be your solidification within yourself. And anything that does not match that vibration in your life doesn't mean that you avoid it. It means you can go into it holding that strong place of peace. Now that peace sits in your gut. It does not sit in your mind. It does not sit in your heart. It sits in your pelvic floor. And to cultivate that, that's the key. Your work is to cultivate that peace so that you can face the darkest things in your life. And the more that you cultivate the peace vibration, the more the dark will pull at you. But it'll force you to cultivate that peace and that light very strong in yourself so that you can finally come into a balance of facing the darkness with the light and being that complete space between the dark and the light. I feel that's the end of this video. I wanted to really talk a lot about that. I'm going to get more into twin flames and whatnot in the next video because the balance of masculine and feminine I feel is very prominent for next week's video. So I would love to hear your comments about this, what you've been experiencing in your life in regards to darker forces and uh, how you've been dealing with it. I'd also love to hear how you have been working with your psyche and cultivating peace and harmony in your life and what's happening with that. Remember, when you're highly intuitive and you're highly sensitive, it is about vibration and feeling for you. It is not in the mind. You've not been working in your mind. The mind stuff uh, is very difficult for empaths and for highly sensitive people to work in. This is about getting into the vibration of your of your feelings and learning about contrast and weighing vibrations out and matching things so that you can cultivate and really work on your inner world to navigate the energy highways. All right, my loves, I am sending you so much love and I can't wait to read your comments and we will see you in another video.